Been a long time. <laughs> yes, it has. That mine on Bendy, right? Kazal. Hellhole. Like this place. Rare mineral contract. Your tastes are a bit more sophisticated now, huh? So, you found something? Right here. The new guy found it. That right. And everything went cool? Just like grabbing those minerals on Bendy? Kazal. And no Barrett. Not cool. He passed out after the extraction. Woke up saying all kinds of nonsense. Is that right, cowboy? Went on a trip, huh? <laughs> that fun, huh? Not the most gentle push into the great mysteries of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits, and I'll be happy to never see this thing, or you, ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Spirit, the scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I'd lost them. Barrett? Of course Barrett was being followed. Every time. That was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. You ever stare up at the stars at night wondering what's out there? Well, that's us. That's where we go. Marvelous. Oh, no, Barrett. No. You think you're just going to take off after the mess you caused? All right. I guess I did just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, 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 I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. Well, now that that's settled. Bosco, get him to the lodge. No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again? Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. At that. The watch fits you perfectly. Now, questions? They're just following the loop, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. <laughs> Holy shit. You actually found me. I wish I could say this is the first time this has happened with Barrett, but, well, it isn't. Well, this is turning into a regular Constellation party, isn't it? It should have brought drinks. Matsur the Grim here and I actually have a lot in common. Both escape artists. Being captured by Sistep myself plenty of times. See, that's what I'm talking about. Relativity. We're all just creatures of the universe trying to get away from what's after us. You know, it's actually been kind of nice. Matsura the Grim here is a great host. No sense letting people's last moments be unpleasant. See, that's what I like about you, Matsura. Real renaissance man. I have enjoyed our time together, Barrett. But I can't just let you go with nothing to show for it. Is Constellation willing to pay ransom in exchange for this man's freedom? You want me to end all this with nothing to show for it?
Nobody wants that. I'm listening for now. He has been more entertaining than most hostages. Garrett has some good friends, it seems. Very well. You're all free to go. It's been a real pleasure, Matt, sir. Really. And good luck out there with all the, you know, hurting people and taking their money. Got a little held up on Vectera. Barrett, we were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't start, country. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not 100%, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? Marvelous. I'm listening. Go ahead and ask. I'll do my best to answer you. Let's see. I've been in Constellation for a long time, as you know. I enjoy cheese, my work, and long walks on unexplored planets. <laughs> what else did you want to know about? Let me know if there's anything else. Have any new books for me? Anything I can help you with, Captain? So, you gotta fill me in on what happened at the temple. What happened? What did you see? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Then what happened? I heard you did some stuff and then you... changed. By different, you mean you have magical superpowers? Sure, different is technically appropriate as a descriptive, but it wouldn't be my first choice. You encountered advanced technology that altered your biology in a way that results in... In what? Superpowers? Fair enough. Maybe we can run some tests later. Anyway, thanks for filling me in on the temple and your power. I wonder if we can find any more traces of whoever built them. Just opens up a world of questions. It's so exciting. I have to talk about the Starborn. Do you have a second? You do, right? It was awesome. Right? How could we not talk about it for the rest of our lives? It could be the dawn of a new era of humanity. Or... It could be an elaborate prank or any number of mundane explanations. Well, they were definitely unusual, but aliens seem so inhuman, obviously. I just have so many questions. We just need more data. There has to be a way to draw them out and figure out where they're coming from. It's one of our few facts about them. It seemed very important to them, too. This could be a turning point for humanity, you know? Or it could be just the emergence of a powerful new faction, or some sort of elite military tech, or a gazillionaire with nothing else to do. All we know is that they wanted that artifact badly. Agreed. That is going to require more observations, more encounters with them. And who knows? Maybe we'll never see them again. I've been meaning to thank you for helping me with the Crimson Fleet before. I could have handled it myself, of course, but it's good working with a team. I 
It's good to be part of a team, isn't it? To be part of something so much bigger than any one of us. So many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you can trust is important. That's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out when you're in a jam. Uh, just wait till we get matching shirts and start having official cookie days. They're one of humanity's greatest achievements. Modern medicine, space travel, and cookies. Constellation is quite pro-cookie. Because, you see, we value human accomplishments. Speaking of which, your work with Constellation has been impressive. Truly impressive. Well, I try to be welcoming to everybody who joins. Oh. Oh, um... Exactly how enjoyable. Wait, no, don't, don't tell me. Not right now anyway. Just let me keep going. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a lot of opportunities and a fair bit of stress, I'll admit. It's hard to imagine just who I'd be had I never joined up. I would have never done so many things, met so many people. It's mind boggling how different I would be. And I never would have met Irvin. Or lost him, I suppose. That's right. We can't know the consequences of the choices we never made. And anything beyond that is imagination alone. But for the choices we made, it feels just a bit closer, doesn't it? Irvin's been gone for over 20 years. Strange how memories can pop up when you least expect it. Oh, I've been giving myself nothing but space and time <laughs> for years. But maybe it's time for me to really think about it. Well, maybe I'll take you up on that offer later on, Captain. I need some time to think about things. On that note, I think I'd do well to distract myself with a little adventure for a bit. What's on your mind? Should I be nervous? <laughs> go on, go on. It's a difficult topic. For years, I pretended like I was over it. But I'm not. I can't guarantee I can answer everything, but I want to try. Thanks for listening. Did you have any other personal questions, or was that it? Listen, you risk your life to save me. I keep wondering if that made it harder to save Sarah, too. I've replayed those moments in my mind over and over, and you need to know that you did what a leader does. And if it had been me instead of her, I would feel at peace knowing that she made it. I know, and I can't say it's the best choice, but nevertheless, thank you. I don't know if you're ready to talk, or if you need 20 years to get to that point, or if you never want to talk about it again, but I just want you to know that if you do, I'm here for you. I'm not sure that I am. But maybe in time, that will change. Of course. Could have been so much worse. We are all constellation. When a star goes nova, it can destroy everything nearby, or it can nourish a new era of planets and life and everything that goes with it. The galaxy is littered with the deaths of so many brilliant, wonderful stars. But if stars never went nova, then we wouldn't be who we are now.
still doesn't make it easier for anybody, even you. But you did what you had to do. We all know that. Sarah was our leader. She was the light in Aja's eye, and she kept everything together. She would tell you right now that this was not your fault. She would want us to focus and solve this problem together. Yes, we need to expect it and prepare. You know, we're fortunate. Constellation brought us all together and we're all better for it. If we're going to set things right, it's going to be because of that. No kidding. Think of the dissertations. Boundless topics, no bounds. <laughs> Except the books, they're bound. This explains so much, though. They're disorganized, petty, weird, and also deeply fascinating at the same time. Because they are just people. We never rule that out, but it feels so good to know we weren't fighting against robot alien ghost gods or something. True. We need to approach this critically and carefully. We can't just jump in. Or... Uh, I, I mean, we... Could, I guess. But it all comes back to this. We don't know what will happen if you enter the Unity. You might lose yourself or become a two-headed space shark. There are too many variables. It crossed my mind. But everybody has lost somebody and most of us have lost many more. It can't be the deciding factor here right now. It's more of a possible benefit. Of course, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But I will say this. Our entire purpose in Constellation is to explore. Why would we stop now? The way I see it is anybody entering the Unity has no more regular people concerns. But I do. That's my only worry. I just feel like I would be susceptible to becoming one of the bad ones. And I cannot do that. My hundred-year-old grandma would become a starborn, track me down, and I can't even say what would happen. But it might involve the space shark ghost god thing. Anytime. The possibility of turning evil aside? <laughs> I appreciate you taking the lead on this. You're guiding Constellation to new frontiers, new discoveries, and we should all follow your example. Uh, on that note, there's something else I'd like to discuss with you, if you have time. It's not on the scale of entering the Unity, but it is tangentially related. Thanks. <laughs> this has been swirling in my brain goo for a while now. So... I've been pondering over what's happened and what it all means. And I've got a favor to ask. A teensy-weensy favor. About the size of a plank limp, really. I think it's time I joined you in the physics bending powers business. <laughs> See if one of those temples works for more than just you. Marvelous. I'm glad you're as gung-ho about this as I am. As it so happens, I've already talked to Vladimir. Seems our eye in the sky is back up and running. He sent me the coordinates for the temple already. We just have to visit.
enormous concentration. Whoa. Hello, handsome. You've got to be joking. Nope. Okay. Skipping the initial shock of it all. Agreed. Not worth it. Forming a hypothesis. Hmm. Me. Accurate. I'm just, uh, passing through. Molecular binary schism? Temporal twinning? Group hallucination? Don't forget the fluctuations in the energy patterns, which align almost deterministically. Harmonize vibrations, distorting some mechanical barrier between neighboring universes? Impossible to know with such a minute subset of readings. We need more data. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Why stop that too? It won't work. The energy required increases exponentially per anomaly. I'm already exhausted. In a way that's hard to describe. N not physically or mentally, but... something else. Sorry, friend. You'll feel right as rain when I dissipate. Whoa, there. Sustaining this connection requires a lot of concentration. Is this permanent? You will eventually monitor the energy fluctuations and agree. But no, this is unusual. I could study this forever. Urban told me to just enjoy it and collect data on the side for later. And I'm glad I did. Irvin? He's with you. He's... okay? By the tone of your voice, I'm gathering some things in our lives might be a bit different. Is he... is he happy? Yes, he is. Our daughter pilots the ship after Vasco was destroyed. But otherwise, we've survived the war well. It's been so long. The horror of the infinite is the inclusion of the unimaginable. I promise. He's happy. We're happy. I have so many questions. I wonder how many paths I've taken. We've taken. How many variations? How many ended with heartache and how many with joy? I think about that all the time. Wait. What's that noise? Starborn ship. We can handle this. On it. Something happened. Uh, I can't hold on to you. I'm struggling. Being pulled through the barrier. This is probably it, friends. Amundsen? Cherish every moment with them. I already do, my friend. I promise. So look, for the record, I am the same Barrett that came here with you. For sure. I think. Isn't it? I mean, hey, at least only one other Barrett appeared. Imagine if an army of, uh, me showed up. True. How would I stand out in a crowd made entirely of myself anyway? Anyway, it's a relief, you know. I have this ability, this power. And I'm still just... me. Just regular Barrett. And they already feel like it's subsiding. I no longer feel like I'm in a huge crowd. I thought so too. Other me, other Barrett, seemed like he was able to handle himself well in that fight. 
Anyway, we'll see. If the other me gets in the way, I can just release him or stop using the power entirely. For now, I just need to use this power a bit and digest what all has happened. I lost my Irvin. I know that. I wish beyond anything that he appeared in that temple instead of me. But it helps to know there's an Irvin out there somewhere living a life full of love with someone like me. I can move forward with that thought in my heart. That's pretty exhausting, really. So I might only do it when I feel like we could use backup. For now, anyway. Never mind. Sorry. I'm thinking of something else. Okay. Uh, if it weren't for Constellation, uh, I can't say my life isn't open. It feels so bizarre to refer to it that way. But please, continue with your questions. Hey, not funny. It could happen. Power corrupts, you know. Maybe I'll become some sort of cosmic, many-eyed monster intent on devouring humanity. Then what? Anyway, evil is a silly concept, and I'm pretty sure you'd know what to do in that case anyway. I think. Got me pretty nostalgic, and I started digging in some old things. Just sort of reminiscing. I found some of Irvin's last messages to me and thought I'd listen to them again to hear his voice. It was surreal, honestly. So most of the messages were everyday things. Lots of excitedly written news about biodiversity and plant life. But one thing stood out. In one of his messages, he mentioned this job that he took at a mine shortly before he died. He said something terrible was happening there. But the message was garbled after that. True, but this was different. I recognized this pattern from the war. A portion of the message was encrypted. Well, Vasco helped me decipher it. Turns out the message was from Irvin, and he was begging me to help him. The message was short, but his voice was pained. He was so upset. He said they were going to destroy his life if he didn't leave the planet now. Then he asked me to help clear his name. Said they had a case against him. Oh, he sounded so upset. Yes. Hearing his voice in so much pain was very difficult. Oh, I wish I had noticed this message when he sent it. So in this message, Irvin said he was being framed. He said they'll do it again. He asked if Constellation could send more help. His former employer is at some job he took before he died. I think it was a mining company. It is, but I was thinking about it and, well, it's still wrong, right? So I figured, hey, I can do some sort of a remote investigation here, see what I can find out. There's got to be a paper trail, right? Now, I happen to have a trustworthy contact who knows a bit about law and owes me a favor. I'd need to pay in advance in case there are any access fees or bribes. That works. I'll tell them to go ahead with the investigation. You know, hearing Irvin's voice again made me want to help him. <laughs> even though I know I can't. Does that make any sense? Huh. Can't say I've had that effect on anyone before. Hopefully poking around in old records doesn't catch the attention of Hephaestus. 
Well, anyway. I'll let you know if my contact finds anything. Hey, so I'm really enjoying our time together. Thought you should know. It's been a long time since I worked with someone so closely. I didn't realize how much I missed it. And you haven't stopped me from looking into this stuff with Irvin either. So, thank you. Thank you. It means a lot to know someone that you, well, care about feels the same. On that note, I do have some news about Irvin's case. So, I wanted to let you know that I heard back from my contact, and I think you'll want to hear this. They sent me a copy of some public records. It's interesting. There was a claim filed against Irvin, accusing him of damaging their investments. Looks like Irvin didn't even enter a plea. He wasn't even on the planet for the duration of the trial. I think they scared him off. Anyway, this mining corporation, Hephaestus, sued Irvin, claiming he irreparably damaged their mine. They said he killed the apex predators in the area around the mine, which led to herd creatures overeating the grasses. That caused the soils to release too many gases too fast, which cost Hephaestus a ton of money. Thank you. So, is this a cover-up? If so, of what? And why did it involve Irvin? So anyway, according to the court documents, there was a witness for the defense. Who was a no-show too? Then Hephaestus won by default. They tried to take his apartment, but because it's in my name too, they couldn't. They withdrew their testimony the morning of the trial. Said they had a sincere change of heart. That doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. And if nothing else, I just want to know more about what happened to Irvin. So here's what I was thinking. I can persuade my contact to keep digging a little bit more. I don't want to press our luck, so I'll just ask them to follow up on one thing. Should I tell them to investigate the company more, or look into the witness instead? I don't generally like Owen favors, but in this case it might be worth it. You know, this investigation is time-consuming, but it's also pretty cathartic. And who knows, maybe if we solve this case, It'll mean a better future for Gagarin, but that's thinking too far ahead. Anyway, Captain, thanks for checking in with me. You know, I needed this. Exploring the galaxy with you by day, investigating the mysterious legal woes of my long-dead spouse by night. You know, I couldn't agree more. Hmm, I was just remembering how I'd pour my heart out to Vasco. So many times. I told him all about Irvin. He showed me a chart of how sad I should expect to feel. Why not? Trust me. I've talked to way less sentient humans before. Vasco's just fine for most conversations. Oh, we got to point B many times just fine. Top-notch co-pilot. Would recommend him to anybody. Anyway, I'm glad you're here right now because we have things to discuss about Irvin's case. I heard back from my contact. They looked into Hephaestus Mining Corporation. Looks like they paid off the judge. And that's not all. My contact really came through for us. Turns out the witness was threatened until he withdrew his testimony. And thanks to our contact, we now have the receipts. I 
tend to agree. It's interesting. Not enough to take it to a lawyer yet. So I know a cyber runner who has accessed corporate archives before. They can dig into the classified archives before we go to a lawyer. We can pay extra for them to use less legal methods to obtain information. But that adds risk. I appreciate that, Captain. But I'll take care of any fines or bribes that come up from this. You have always been so supportive of me during this process. Let me take care of this part. Depending on what they find out, it might be time to talk to a lawyer. I'll see if I can find one. Whew. Taking on Hephaestus isn't going to be easy. And I say this is someone with actual superpowers. Why couldn't I have gotten something more useful? Like the art of cross-examination. Might have come in handy at the trial. Massages are nice for relieving stress, sure, but... Have you ever jumped around in an atmosphere full of human-sized, colorful bubbles and ultra-low gravity? It's bouncy chaos. Wait. Oh, you meant like... You and me. Oh, right. Gotcha. I knew that. Sure, massages would be perfect. <clears throat> my, oh my. Anyway, let's go adventure while we wait on the cyber runner to get back to us. The United Colonies. You know, traveling with you has been more than just good old fashioned fun. It's been, well, therapeutic. Well, just ask. Anyway, thanks for the support, Captain. So am I. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I will keep that in mind. Which brings me back to that plan I mentioned earlier. I think I know how to move forward now. But I'm going to need your help. My contact sent a gift. Seems real to me. So they found an insurance settlement. Irvin's employers got paid as compensation for sabotage. It seems that the mining company got a huge payout after they won the case against Irvin. We have the settlement paperwork from their insurance. Tons of money. Oh, also the cyber runner had to move on to other work, but sent me a passcode to some computer system. I'm not sure what it goes to yet. We can just hold on to it until we figure it out. But anyway, we have enough to move forward. The missing piece here is proving that Irvin was framed. So I discovered that Irvin's original lawyer still practices law, and she'll look over everything we found. Oh, detective. I like the sound of that. If I'm the detective, does that make you my trustworthy and sensible partner with a heart of gold? Hmm, well, I can work with that. Detective Barrett at your service. Anyway, we should take everything to the lawyer and see what she says. Maybe she reviews it and decides we have no case, or... We need more evidence, I don't know. If we don't have a case, I can probably let it go. But I have to try. Fantastic. I knew I could count on you. You're as reliable as an atomic clock. I've sent a list of everything we've found so far to the lawyer on Gagarin. You know, I, I actually feel optimistic about this. Lead the way, detective. I was just thinking that this is about what Irvin saw all those years ago when he arrived. He probably stood here thinking that he was going to make things better. He had a good heart. Oh, you remind me of him sometimes. Wanting to make things right. And when you said it out loud, you know, I actually believe we can do it. I just hope our lawyer is as confident. 
Right. She said she would meet us at our office when we arrive. Hopefully she can tell us what we need to do in order to clear Irvin's name. Let's stick together, though. Gagarin isn't a huge town, but it's not the kind of town that I want to get lost in. Well, well, well. Barrett, you're actually here. Astounding. Ellie! Ellie, come on. I promised we'd stop by, didn't I? Hmm. People make promises all the time, Barrett. And most folks try to avoid Gagarin, not visit it. Anyway, I'm glad you made it out here. We have work to do, don't we? Down to business. Perfect. What do you already know? So we already know that Irvin worked for Hephaestus Mining Company years ago, and they blamed him for catastrophic economic and ecological issues here in Gagarin. Yes, he lost his case because he didn't defend himself, and we had almost no evidence without him. Well, we can bring the case to a judge here if we have new evidence or a witness. What about the evidence we found so far? Yes, well, about that. It's just not enough. In order for me to go before a judge, I'd like to have some solid evidence pertaining to motive. Yeah, we need something major. Documentation, recordings, a witness, something. It's been so long. How could we find anything like that? I've thought about this a lot since the original case. The mine that Irvin worked at was shuttered in 2309. They probably still have documents relating to whatever happened there with him. Not really. All I know is that it's a Hephaestus mine from 20 years ago, somewhere on Gagarin. I don't have a couple decades to wait for you to search them all, so we'll need to narrow it down. That's where you come in. I don't know which mine he worked at when the incident took place. In theory, you could find that information on a foundry terminal. If you can access it, you'll need a passcode. That's the hard part. Besides the foundry records, there also might be something in Irvin's apartment. If he knew he was being framed, he might have held on to some documents there. Even the confidential records and salvageable equipment? Seems wasteful. It was probably cheaper than transporting older machines around the planet. Makes sense. Not many people wander around outside of the city looking for abandoned mines. Why lock your door when you're the only person on the planet, right? Anyway, try to log into the foundry system or convince someone to find Irvin's mine for you. Sounds like an awkward conversation. Fortunately, the captain is rather good at those. Hopefully, that's enough to work with for now. If you'll excuse me, I have to get some court documents ready for this case. The Foundry District isn't too far from here. Coordinates look valid to me. Imagine Irvin thinking the same thing all those years ago. Just a job, right? Well, at least we know where to keep looking, right? Guess we'll see what state the mine is in. It's possible they collapsed it before they left. We just won't know until we get there. If that's the case, we'll just have to figure something out. How I get why he wanted me to look after his plants. No windows. Insufficient power for proper lamps. Oh, he must have been miserable. <laughs> no wonder he wrote so much. Well, I'll be. <laughs> If you ever doubted Irvin's genius, look at all this. Still chugging along 20 years later. Hold on. Is that what I think it is? There's got to be a way to look up applications. Aha. Uh -huh. Will you look at that? If we go to town hall, I bet we can get a copy of that hunting license. Let me see. 
I've already got the coordinates to mine H363. But this will still solidify the fact that he was there. All right, we've got some solid leads, it looks like. The employment contract and the hunting license at Town Hall. Much better than liquid or gas leads. That much is evident. Ah, it was a bit strange going through Irvin's old things, though. I was hoping for some old pictures, but nothing. Hmm, <laughs> what's that you have there? A plant? Yes, and it was always a remarkable species with an even more remarkable story. I wonder if the same is true for this guy. I'm not sure. It might not even be a plant. It might technically be a fungus. But there's probably a reason why Irvin tried his best to keep it alive. When we get back home, I'll go through some of his research notes. It might tell us something more about this plant. Hopefully it's not poisonous. No, maybe not, but it helps me. Irvin was the last person to handle this plant. It mattered to him. No matter how the case goes, this warms my heart. I didn't expect to find it, but I love that I did. In any event, I'll go through Irvin's notes in more detail later. There's probably a flowchart somewhere with this little guy's name on it. Oh, <laughs> on that note, we should give it a name. I'm thinking something simple, yet refined. What do you think of Harvey? Then it's unanimous. Okay, the three of us should get back to it. You, me, and Harvey have a case to solve. You're back. Well, what did you uncover? We got it from Town Hall and everything. It's the real deal. I see. This sort of thing works well for the narrative of our case, but we will need more evidence to bring it to a judge. We're on it, Ellie. Don't worry. Well, I like the sound of that. Okay, now that is a solid lead. Well, don't let me stop you while you're on a roll, detectives. We can talk more later. was the destruction of the bacterial colonies, not the apex predators. So, they ruined the ecosystem here. And it had nothing to do with This is it. This is what Ellie needs to see. Lights are on down. Ellie! Hello? Welcome back, detectives. Ellie, I sent you all the data from the mine already. As I'm sure you know. Yes, I've been reviewing it. Sit down. Let's have a chat about it. Welcome back, you two. How was the trip to the mine? You're gonna love this, Ellie. Okay, someone better tell me. Come on. We found the coordinates to Irvin's old work site and went there. Huge battle, fire, explosions. Pew, 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 oh, pew. Barrett, please. You should have seen the plants in there too. Weird stuff. Anyway, you read over the documents we found there, right? What do you think? What you both found in that mine is remarkable. These documents show that the chemicals released by the mining process contaminated the ecology even before Irvin was tasked with removing the predators. And they also show that Helgi informed Hephaestus of the issue and it was repeatedly ignored. And with that, I think we've got ourselves a case, my friends. Yes! That's what I wanted to hear, Ellie. Woo! Yes, but it's still likely to lose. Because what we really need now is Helgi as our witness and that is a problem.
Helgi's documents are nothing without him there in court, explaining them to the judge. Does Helgi still live around here by any chance? Sort of. He's, uh, unpredictable, though. You might ask Dr. Kayala. She checks up on folks who fall through the cracks sometimes. You'd have to convince her to tell you where he is. That might be hard. Sounds like we're making a stop at the med clinic. We'll be back when we convince Helgi to be a witness. Listen, if he refuses, then he refuses. Can't force him. Yeah, we don't want to press him too hard. The last thing we need is him refuting what he wrote. This is going to take a light touch, but I think we can handle it. Do you need medical assistance? Are you injured? Is there something I can help you two with? Do you happen to know Dr. Helgi Hawkson? We're trying to get his help with something. Sorry, who are you exactly? We're detectives. Self-taught and unaffiliated. Freelance detectives. With the emphasis on the free part. Wait, what? Detectives? <sighs> Sorry, I don't think I know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I'm not a tour guide. You'll have to ask somebody else. We're trying to help him. And Gagarin, actually. Ellie's a good person. That bodes well, but I can't violate my oaths. I'm sorry. Listen. I can say that Helgi took up a job working at Clint's store just down the way. I saw him there stacking boxes the last time I picked up an order. I've got to get back to my work here, so if there's nothing else... If it's patient medical records you're after, I'll remind you, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. We're thinking of taking Hephaestus to court with Dr. Hawkson as a witness. Now, given his situation, we're worried the defense might um, cast aspersions on his character, even question his mental health. That's unfortunate, but not surprising. <sighs> Look, if he agrees to testify and grants me permission, I could vouch for his well-being. Thanks, Doc. If he does end up testifying, We'll definitely need you for the trial. Ellie Yankton will be in touch. No promises, given patient confidentiality, but I'll do my best. Let me look you over. Honestly, I'm surprised you're walking around like this. Mm, straightforward zipper job, really. There, good as new, more or less. Welcome to Clint's. Whatever you need, I'm sure I've got it lying around somewhere. Except mech parts. Don't trade those anymore, so don't waste your time asking. If you need anything, just follow the sound of falling inventory. You'll find me eventually. Funny you ask, because I'd like to know too. He owes me a sizable debt. Yeah, I don't want to be mixed up with anything like that. I mean, it might be okay. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. All right, fine, fine. I don't know where he is, but ask Lizzie up at the bar. She knows everybody. Suppose you heard the news. Terramorphs. In the UC capital. I know I needed a drink after I heard it. Looking for a drink? Don't serve anything fancy, so if you're about to ask for wine spritz or whatever, you can hop right back on your ship to New Atlantis. Menu. You're funny. Here's what I've got. Ah, yes. Uh, the detectives. I heard about you. A reputation already? 
I'm impressed. Mm, slow news day, I guess. I serve drinks here, friend. Oh, uh, we were told that you are a local crime. We serve drinks here. Here's a list of our specials for today. Um, there's nothing on here. Oh, that's strange. Here, let me fix that. Don't worry, it's just the one sale today. Oh, right. Of course, it's a number. Here you go, Captain. All yours. The service I provide is worth quite a lot. Don't think I'm desperate or anything, but you do have a point. Hold on. I never said that was my final offer. Yeah, I hope so. All right, all right. Consider it a favor. Sending the coordinates now. Wait, so let me get this straight. You want the bartender to testify he's not a lousy drunk? Happy to take your credits anytime. I don't suppose you're here to tell me I've won a ticket to a new planet, huh? Sorry, Doctor. Not today. We came to Gagarin to investigate Irvin Mandani's contract with the mining company a long time ago. Ring any bells? Irvin, yeah. Biologist. Hunter. Yeah, I remember him. Why? Who are you people? Then find the history slate. Ancient history slate. Because that's what it is. Please. Irvin was once one of your colleagues. He was the one who faced this blame for an ecological disaster about 20 years ago. Do you remember any of that? No, I don't remember lies. He passed on. That's a kick in the pants, isn't it? Well, sorry for your loss and all that, but I can't bring back the dead or anything. So you can go now. Thanks. Look, I know this is strange. We show up out of the blue about things that happened decades ago. But right now, nobody save us knows the truth. And that means we're the only ones who can clear Irvin's name. Then Irvin should have showed up at the trial to defend it himself. It's not just about Irv. This can't be the only time something like this has happened. Someone needs to hold this company accountable. That's why we'd like you to testify in court. Testify? The trial is over, the verdict rendered. In case you two clowns didn't get the memo. Ellie? Ellie Yankton? But why? Ah, it doesn't matter. Nothing's changed. I can't. I cannot do that. Why is this so hard to understand here? Hard to argue with that. What's right has got nothing to do with it. Bank transactions. A precise amount was transferred to the judge only the day before the ruling. Doesn't surprise me they'd leave a paper trail. I'm no lawyer, but might be grounds to throw the old verdict out. Yeah, you may have a point. You 
You got the point. Hephaestus' scientists will just say my theories are unfounded without me to defend them. <sighs> Fine, you've convinced me. I'd be willing to testify on one condition. I want to know what happened to Irvin. Because when he disappeared, let's just say I had an epiphany. Hephaestus didn't need to say a word. That's when I knew the threats against me and my family were real. Dr. Hawkson, it wasn't Hephaestus that took Irvin's life. It was the war. Irvin was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Caught in the crossfire. Then I am sorry for your loss. It won't change the past for either of us. But I will testify. And maybe... Wherever Irvin is, you'll be glad that we can finally stick it to those assholes at Hephaestus. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, don't get all mushy on me now. <sighs> I need a drink. Okay, you two, lay it on me. Did you find Helgi? Did he agree to testify? Well, we've got good news and, well, that's it. Just more good news. Okay. Does that mean he said yes? Well, that is perfect. She's probably the best person to call on should Hephaestus decide to play dirty. Well, you two have done all that you could. Now it's time to hand the baton off to me. What do you think, Ellie? Do we have a chance? The evidence you've gathered is impressive. It truly is. So what's the verdict? In this case, I'd say spoilers are appreciated. I almost never say this, because I don't want to jinx it, but I think this case is a slam dunk. Huzzah! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I think we can do everything on our checklist. Clear Irvin of any wrongdoing, charge Hephaestus with the cover-up, and even restore Helgi, uh, Dr. Hawkson, standing in the scientific community. All in all, though, really outstanding work. We wouldn't have gotten this far without your efforts. And I've got to imagine that wherever Irvin is, he appreciates it too. Agreed, Ellie. And thanks for being our anchor in this. We should probably get out of Ellie's way and let her do her thing. We can talk more in private. Wow, we actually did it! Solved the case! and hopefully cleared Irvin's name. I feel like, what's the old saying? A great weight has been lifted off my shoulders? But it's actually true. I feel like I'm 80% biomass and 20% aerogel. Thanks. I was trying not to be too optimistic about our chances, because that's when a cosmic reversal kicks in. But I think it's okay in this case. We've already proven Irvin's innocence, and I trust Ellie to explain it. Ellie would know better than I, but I doubt it'll be anytime soon. These things tend to involve a lot of red tape. It's a special kind of adhesive that makes you stick to old filing cabinets and manila envelopes. I'm feeling great. Although I could do with some wine and cheese. Why stop at emotional satisfaction when we can indulge in the culinary too? But if I can be serious for a moment, thank you. I couldn't have done this without your help. Ah, that's sweet. But it wasn't just for me, it was for Ur. And of course, we can't forget our new friend Harvey. In fact, 
Harvey's got a little explorer in him, too. According to this slate I found, turns out that our spiky friend's been all across the galaxy. I doubt it. Harvey's a wanderer. Getting lost is how he finds his way home. We've been through a lot, haven't we? I had forgotten what it was like to work with someone so closely. On top of everything else we've done together and with Constellation? Yeah, I think so. Investigating Irvin's case with you is something I'll remember forever. I've come to realize that some events, some people, stand out as pillars of my life. Yes, some of them do. And if we're lucky, they change us for the better. <clears throat> We only get a brief moment in this universe to interact, to feel, to be who we are and experience the range of emotions that our bodies and minds have evolved to comprehend. Sure, our bodies are all we have, really. Humans are physical, which allows us to be social. This allows us to interact with others on a natural, almost primordial level. And these interactions can be fleeting or drawn out substantially, if you know what I mean. Anyway, if one is fortunate, you might even notice events and people changing you while it is in motion. I know I certainly am. I've explored many worlds, and I've worked with Constellation for most of my life. I cherish those memories. But you have changed me as a person forever. I don't want to look back years from now and wonder what if. I need to know what you think about us. You cannot know how relieved I am to hear you say that because <sighs> I feel exactly the same way. I haven't missed your uh, <laughs> very welcome and affectionate hints. I still grin when I think about some of the things you've said. And just so you know, I loved it every single time. But before we go on further, are you really ready to build love into our friendship? This is a huge step, you know. I'm... I'm ready to. This... Whew, this is the moment I was hoping for. The moment that I will remember forever. <laughs> My heart is racing. This is an adventure in itself, isn't it? Always hello there, my star shine. When you have a chance, let's talk. Ah, uh, glorious as always. Ah, uh, you too. So, I was thinking about our relationship and what it means in a multiversal reality. There are probably universes out there where we don't get together, and universes where we're a throuple, and of course, ones like this one, where we do. It's both a fait accompli that we find love somewhere, but also highly improbable that we do in any one variation. And so, the path taken may have a few more bends. Imagine us being bitter rivals, or even arch enemies. Only to find common ground over a slice of tiramisu and cake flavored chunks. That being said, it took me a while to get to my happy place. I may have been happy go lucky out of the box, but since then, I've gotten a few dings. And when we discovered the multiverse was real, man. There were moments I was drowning in self-pity.
Yeah, I guess I don't like to be vulnerable. Part of the problem of having a soft and squishy center. But then I look at how soft you can be and still manage to stand up to the bad guys, and I think, well, let's change the paradigm. I guess what I'm saying is there's a chance being in this situation would have crushed me. Knowing there were other Irvins out there, other lives where we were happy, I would have thought to myself, why me? Why am I alone? But that's not the case, is it? And while I will always love Irvin, the fact is he was from another universe, one that passed with him. The me that's standing here now, he wants to live in this universe for as long as it takes with you. Oh, I love it when you know what you want. You just light up with energy. I'm honestly a bit overwhelmed. But in the good, happy, brain.exe is malfunctioning kind of way, Vasco would probably tell me that human emotions just overcomplicate things. But it is who we are. And I love you, you know? I think everything we've discovered helped me conceptualize all this loss. Once I was able to do that, I could love myself enough to love you. And I was just wondering if, um... Hmm. <laughs> I didn't prepare this far. I miss being called that. And nothing makes me happier to hear you say that to me as well. Hmm, married. <laughs> I was so happy just being with you that I forgot about those societal rituals. Humans develop these things to declare our allegiances and define who we protect and provide for. Over time, it became more about celebrating love and hope for the future. When Irvin and I married, we picked a place that we both loved that was strongly symbolic. We had tons of friends and family. It was a big deal, and it was exactly what he wanted. This time, my only request is that Vasco officiates for us. He's a machine, I know, but he's family. I can't wait to see the look on Vasco's face. Uh, I, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> Big breath. Okay, I'm ready. And I can't wait to say I do. Home sweet home. Bittersweet home, I suppose. Your face indicates a question is pending. Yes, Captain. Hey, Vasco, my friend, my pal, old buddy. Detecting incoming request. Significant chance of socially awkward proposition. Processing. Not enough valid relationship data to affirm such a formality. Human units have not made affectionate contact with Vosco prior to this proposition. Ambiguity detected in syntax. Please restate intentions. Barrett, verify. It's true, Vasco. And I'd like you to be there, my old friend. Request approved. Due to hormonal disturbances, there was a 60% chance of this outcome, so I have prepared a formal procedure in advance. Please provide the coordinate details. Be still my beating heart. That will initiate a funeral procedure, Barrett. It's an expression, Vasco. Continue Neptrals Procedure 2.0, please. Human humor is borderline. 
grim at times. Vasco, my friend, you have nothing to apologize for. Your patience is appreciated. As you requested, the wedding procedure may now begin. Go on, Vasco. We're ready. Yes, Captain. Vasco, we're ready now. First, I require input from both users to proceed. Please provide your spousal address, wife, husband, partner, or some other title. My second husband. Ranked only in chronological order, but not in love. Please go with husband for me, Vasco. Or you can refer to me as the amazing husband if you want. Declined. Husband is sufficient. Next prompt. There are two versions of the ceremony. Succinct and verbose. Please decide. Succinct covers the legalities and no more. Verbose includes imitative human pleasantries. I'm marrying a romantic here, and I absolutely love it. Confirmed. More input is required. Please state any modifications needed. And now that you mention it, yes. I'd like to present a token of my affection. A segment of time has been allocated for your property transfer. It's just sentimental, really. Uh-oh. I didn't prepare anything. Hmm. Canceling request. <laughs> okay, uh, no. No, I think I can wing it. I'm willing to give it a try. Accommodation will be made for both participants to interject some testament of loyalty, affection, or miscellaneous thoughts. A blessing. Well, it's your wedding too, so of course. You know, I know it means something to you, and this is your moment as well as mine. Conflict detected. Both ideologies will be accommodated. That works for me. Mutual respect. That's our shared belief. Confirmed. Please do not emit further noises until prompted. Initiating nuptials procedure 2.5. Please pause hormone production until the end of the ceremony. Let us begin. Welcome, affectionate humans, robots, animals, plants, fungi, bacteria. <clears throat> Vasco, bring it back, buddy. Skipping additional formalities. By committing to each other legally, you signify your desire to merge lives. Amundsen Barrett, do you take this person as your lawfully wedded husband? Yeah, of course. Obviously, right? I mean, I do. <clears throat> I do. The same question will be posited to all parties. Do you take Amundsen Barrett as your lawfully wedded husband? <sighs> That's a relief. Please state your custom vows. Let's make it into a reality. Barrett's heart rate increased, but only momentarily. Continue. I agree. No reason to think it would change. Affirmations recorded. Please continue with your vows. Is it okay to feel something that's normal? Yes, of course it's okay. So, is it time for cake yet? The vow exchange is now complete. Barrett, you requested a moment to present a token of affection. Yes, uh, this is going to seem weird, but here. I 
I'm pretty sure it's one of a kind. So this little guy, Harvey, symbolizes a lot of things. He was rescued once from a dying planet and once from a windowless apartment. When it comes down to it, he's got an explorer's heart. He's brave, resilient, and just a tad bit weird. Kind of like us. And while the ones we love are forever in our thoughts, with this gift, only you hold my heart in your hands. The material gesture is now complete. Blessings upon the union of these two beings. May you be imbued with energy from your bond of love by the power vested in this unit by the authority of New Atlantis. I now pronounce you buried. Congratulations. My magnetic personality brought you back, right? Adorable. Yes, of course you can. Considering how many variables must have been negotiated in order for us to meet and fall in love, I'd say I'm the luckiest man alive. Not many people get to explore this strange universe with the person they absolutely adore. You're pretty lucky, right? Kidding. If you need another sweet nothing, you know what to do. Just ask. I am at your service, Captain. I've experienced solar storms, meteor showers, volcanic eruptions, but you, oh, are something else. Thank you for that adventure. I hope later tonight we can continue exploring together. Waking up with you is the highlight of my day, and I'm literally an adventurer. Oh, wait there. Let me savor this moment. Ah, perfection. Mm, hello there. So, next time, let's switch off the gravity, okay? Good morning, you. We could cuddle more, but adventure really does await. <laughs> you fell asleep while I was telling you about that time I... No, never mind. It's okay. I love your sleepy face. Now we could stay in bed forever. Or, we could jump up and explore. <laughs> what do you say? I'm... I'm speechless. And that's saying something. Thank you for that adventure. Say the word and I'll clear my schedule. You mean exploring the galaxy with a loving, wonderful person? It's all I've ever wanted. Look at us, showing love and affection and not being at all awkward about it. Ha, <laughs> perfect. Now I can focus again. Is there anything left to discover in this universe now that I've found your glorious love? The answer is yes, obviously. But my love for you is my greatest discovery nevertheless. I mean it. I really do. You have my attention. Our love is the focal point of our orbiting bodies. We can dance like this until the lights go out. 
Oh. Oh no, what's wrong? Okay. Well, no worries then. <laughs> I was just about to go look. Is it perfect? Nope. But you know what's perfect? Something that's deliberately manufactured? Our marriage has rough edges, small blemishes, tiny dings. But it's real and it's beautiful. Anytime, lover. Hey, you. Perfect. I should say this more often, but you are the gravitational well that draws me into a stable orbiting pattern. Oh. Oh no, what's wrong? Wait, what? We've been through so much. What's changed? Huh. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter what's changed. If this is how you feel, then that's enough for me. If I have any say in it, then I'd like that very much. Ah, that's such a relief to hear you say that. I felt like I was falling slowly in low gravity, just flailing and waiting. Wondering how hard the landing would feel when I got to it. We can get through this, okay? Together as a team. Let's give it a try. Hey. I love you. Every day is an amazing adventure with you. And not just because we're literally adventurers. Oh. Oh no, what's wrong? You're serious, aren't you? Ah, you are serious. I can tell. Then... That's it. <laughs> it is what it is. Well... <laughs> Life is ever-changing, ever-adapting. Is our greatest strength to branch out when something isn't working. When I lost Irvin, I couldn't move forward. You showed me how to do that. I'm gonna need some time, but I'll be okay. <laughs> I can do it this time. Well, if you can't apologize, then at least be succinct. Oh, whoa, are you serious? <laughs> No. Hard pass. Not after everything before. At least not unless you show me you've learned a thing or two. 